Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with we'll Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to show you how I made a pair of painted leather bracers which is a little different from what I normally do where it's like dyes and stains and gels and stuff but this was a custom piece for a client and a lot of the techniques shown in this tutorial were used to do the entire costume but we'll talk more about that at the end so let's go ahead and get started. So here I have it drawn out. I have templates available both on my Patreon and my Etsy, but you can feel free to draw your own. I had it sketched out on some 5 to 6 ounce vegetable tanned leather, and I'm just carefully cutting, trying to not overcut into the, you know, finished piece. Um, out with like a box knife, but you could use whatever you like, going through and beveling the edges. There, or, um, it's a kind of a little tool that you can see just removes little segments and it's going to give us a a more polished looking finished piece but or at least that's the idea <laughs> there will be tools to all the different tools and sorry there will be a list of all the different tools and materials used in this video down in the video description um where you can purchase your own but also um Ooh, yeah you can see it really I did it on the front and now I'm going to do it on the back and this really helps give it a nice rounded off edge that's going to hold up nicely over time once we finish that I'm going to go through and I'm using this groove tool to, for doing the stitching it protects the lacing that I or the you know sinew or twine or thread or whatever you end up using to do your lacing this helps it be protected by being kind of snuggled down inside the leather and that way again the longevity of the piece i feel is very important um so the way is kind of what was the what was the point of making it if you're not going to uh, have it last for quite a while so i'm doing that on all the pieces and now i'm using a wing divider to mark a line where I'm going to be cutting and tooling some detailing. Now on your own bracer, you could do, you could skip this part entirely. You could do a completely different design. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm going through and I'm dampening it up with a spritz bottle. You could case it in like a sink or a bowl of water, but you can see it soaks it up quite nicely. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I'm just using a swivel knife to kind of slice through. I like this tip that I'm using. It's different from the one that I normally use, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but again, there'll be a link down below because it leaves a nice deep line. And I'm using a textured bevel foot. You can see it just goes through, and it kind of, it's called leather carving or tooling, depending on who you're talking to. But it by hammering with this textured tool, it's leaving an imprint, like it's condensing the leather where we are doing the hammering, and I've done that on both pieces. And while it's still damp, I'm going through with a Jacquard, the Lumiere paints by Jacquard in the brass and, is it Aztec gold? Again, trying to remember off the top of my head, but I, neither were perfect for the project, so I mixed them both together, and I do about two or three coats. As you can see, you can really see the brush strokes in this, but I love this paint because it's quite flexible. Um, it's acrylic based, but you can see this one here I had done a couple of coats on already. Just going through and really touching it up, and by going in and doing different layers, I'm able to get a really nice full effect. You can use the jacquard paints over, like if I had stained the leather first, that would have given a cool effect. And I've let it dry completely, and I'm coming through with a permanent matte finish acrylic paint and an angled brush, and just getting a little bit of, almost the same way we would use an antique gel. I'm just settling it into the grooves and crevices to really show off that tooling that we've done. <clears throat> and now coming through with a very stiff bristled brush, I'm just catching a little bit across the very edges of the piece, again to help antique it a little bit, but uh, uh, whether it, you know, depending on who you're talking to, you know, uh, basically the same thing, thing though, give it, giving it nice uh, contouring into the shadows and stuff. But on all the edges though, which on this bracer there's more edges than what I'm used to, and just trying to be tidy about it. 
uh, I try to go with less is more uh, with the paint because you can always go back and add more paint, but it is kind of difficult to remove it. <clears throat> I'm just kind of dabbing. I'm using the cap of the bottle um, as a palette, uh, and that way I can just kind of get some on, get some pigment onto the brush, blot it on the my you know freezer paper that is my work surface, and then just brush, brush, brushing. You can really see it just kind of catches a little bit. It's kind of messy though, but that's all right. And now I'm using this barge contact cement <clears throat> on both the leather as well as on the segment of Velcro. And I've let it dry for about three to five minutes. I'll, again, a little goes a long way with this stuff. And so I'm able to just kind of set it. And I have already punched the holes in the leather but you could wait to do that after you have applied the Velcro. It's just a personal preference. And by hammering it, it really binds all the fibers of the leather to the Velcro. And now I'm going through with um, a sharp leather needle and uh, a little out of frame right now, but that's all right. <clears throat> and using my nylon gel pliers to help pull the needle through. But you can see I've used just a diamond tip chisel to punch the holes. And I'm coming through, not in a proper saddle stitch, but just coming around, I actually bind down the tail that we started with. And uh, on shorter segments like this, I prefer to not use two needles. I like to just use the one and kind of zigzag my way through and then zigzag my way back. But using the nylon jaw pliers really, I feel, helps me tremendously and just making my hands last a little longer on the project feeding through that last hole sometimes it can be hard to get the needle to go where you want it to but be patient with yourself and be patient with the project and now we're coming back through the other direction <coughs> I'm very sorry for my cough this evening that's just kind of kind of the way it's going and uh I wouldn't recommend using rivets for attaching the Velcro. Uh, I mean, it can do a bit, but I really like to doing the stitching along this edge because it's where a lot of the stress whenever I'm joining the pieces together was happening. And then I'm going to back stitch a few stitches, really make sure it's it's quite on there. And um, in a perfect world, I would have done a bit of stitching on both ends of the Velcro but uh, the client wanted it a quite canon to the character, so I sacrificed a, a good bit of what I would normally do for durability for the sake of having it be canon. So, just using some flush cutters to snip those little threads. And so now you can see these come together quite nicely. And I did that for all of the segments of Velcro, um, both the sticky and, or the pokey and the soft sides. <clears throat> Just doing a little bit of shaping. And now after, again, the paint has completely dried, um, this is actually the next day at the time of recording, I think, I'm going through rubbing in some Aussie wax, and I have, you can't tell, but it's a quite waxy uh, brush for shoe, shoe shining, and you, you can see it's really on both sides of the leather. This is penetrating, it's conditioning the leather to keep it from drying and cracking, as well as uh, giving it a nice water resistant surface. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, buffing with some blue jean to remove any excess material. And again, you can see how durable this paint is. It goes through all of this flexing, all of this, uh, you know, shaping and buffing and rubbing. So I'm quite pleased with that. And you can just line it up just so. And that's the bracer. Now also, we have one more step. I'm going through and rubbing the edges with beeswax. <clears throat> this is just a hunk of pure beeswax that I got at the craft store. And I'm going through with a wooden edge slicker. And this is really going to seal and close all of those pores in the leather and it's also going to give us a much 
smoother and long life to finish that uh, I feel like the magic of things like this really shine in the details and uh, the craftsmanship really shows through on these little steps so it's a good bit more elbow grease but that's okay you can kind of see the rough unfinished edge versus the nice slicked waxy edge and so here you can see this was the completed costume and while I did use different colors of acrylic to paint all of the leather pieces um, as well as the sword and the sheath it all kind of came out pretty well like I liked it. it was my first time doing a painted leather project but I, I look forward to doing more like this in the future so stay tuned I hope Hey y'all, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Um, maybe it got your creative juices going a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. Um, also, there should be stuff popping up on the screen, maybe over here, uh, where you can see more of my videos, you can subscribe, or you can check out my vlog. Or I'm just moving my hand around awkwardly because I forgot to add those in and that post edit um but anyways um thank you again though so much for uh the first off to the client who commissioned this piece i really enjoyed making it and there will be more tutorials on how i made the piece coming soon but um a lot of it was very similar techniques you'll i always prep the leather the same way and i always finish it the same way so it's just a little bit of variation to what's being done with it kind of in between um <laughs> but that's kind of the fun part too so um, if you enjoy my tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, please um, consider joining me over on Patreon. You don't have to pledge anything. You can just have a, an account and still see tons of behind the scenes, Patreon exclusive stuff that doesn't get posted anywhere else on my social media or on YouTube. And the more you pledge, the more you get as both behind the scenes stuff as well as digital download templates where you can actually download the template for this entire costume bracer included so that you can make it out of foam or thermoplastics or metal or leather or whatever you like and um and then also if you pledge even more um like twenty dollars and up i send out monthly craft crates where you can actually craft alongside me with a lot of the same materials that I work with, but it's also a great way to get your hands on my handmade cabochons <clears throat> that, uh, thanks to y'all, I've been having a really hard time keeping in stock in my Etsy store, so thank you guys so much for that. That's beyond my wildest anticipation for like, oh my god, really? <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can, I send those off in the craft crates as well as the rings that we coil and cut, so that's pretty fun um, and uh, if you have any requests for future videos I'd love to hear about those so now the stuff's probably popping up <laughs> but no until next time guys I hope I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see y'all around so happy crafting bye <laughs>